Good afternoon, I welcome you all to this session of basic thermodynamics. So, last class we discussed the concept of energy from thermodynamic viewpoint. Energy are in two forms, one is energy in transit that is work and heat transfer which are path functions and another form of energy is energy in storage that means stored in a system. They are point functions and they describe the property of a system. Now today before starting the first law, we will discuss the different form of work transfer. Now in this connection I tell you that we have already appreciated that all energy transfer that means energy in transit are categorized in two forms. One is heat transfer that is by virtue of temperature difference, another is work transfer. So electrical work, mechanical work, magnetic work all are there. So conventionally when you call work transfer without any other adjective it includes mechanical work transfer otherwise we tell electrical work transfer magnetic work transfer and all these things. So now we will recognize some important forms of work transfer that means mechanical work transfer first today. Then we will switch over to the first law of thermodynamics, different types of work transfer. Well, so this is like this displacement or PDV work I will explain each and every one, paddle wheel work you can write this, flow work, shaft work these are the different types of work transfer displacement or PDV work, paddle wheel work, flow work, shaft work. These are all mechanical work transfer between the system and its surrounding. All right, displacement or PDV work, paddle wheel work, flow work and shaft work. These are the very important kinds of mechanical work transfer. When the word only work transfer means mechanical work transfer between the system and the surrounding. Now out of these the most important and difficult to understand at certain stage is the displacement or PDV work, the first one. Let us see what is it, displacement or PDV work. Displacement or PDV work is associated with a closed system. Let us consider a closed system specified by some properties, let x, y, two properties, two independent properties to fix its state. Now, this displacement work as the word means it is because of the displacement of the system boundary. That means this is a closed system, there is no restriction whether its volume will be fixed. That means the system boundary can either expand or collapse. So because of the displacement of the system boundary containing a fixed mass of fixed identity, the work transfer which takes place with the surrounding is the displacement work. But there is a specific thing in between, what is that? The displacement work specifically implies the work because of the displacement of the system boundary in a quasi equilibrium process, in a quasi equilibrium process. Why that work PDV comes that will be understood after the quasi, that means system has to expand or collapse slowly through limiting equilibrium states. That means if you consider like this a system which where pressure is exerted on the boundary. Let these are the pressures. Consider a system. Let this system is at equilibrium state and a pressure P is exerted at the system boundary. Now we consider it equilibrium when let the system boundary is such that it cannot withstand any stress. If there is a difference in pressure it will expand or collapse. So it will be in equilibrium when the external pressure imposed on this boundary, when the external pressure, well external pressure imposed on the boundary, external let me denote it PEX, external pressure equals to the pressure inside the system which is uniform throughout the system and external pressure is also uniform throughout the system. Under this situation only the system will be in equilibrium. Now if we consider the system expands, for example the boundary expands in such a way that all the time there is an infinite small pressure imbalance. That means in the theoretical sense we consider the system expands when both the internal pressure and the external pressure that means internal force due to this pressure and the external force due to this external pressure are always balance each other. Under this condition the system boundary expands or collapses, then this work is known as displacement work. Displacement 
main to one. And by doing so, if this system attains another state from exam for example, state 1 to state 2, then if the state 1 is characterized by pressure P 1 V 1 and state 2 is characterized by pressure P 2 V 2 and it attains a state like this where the volume is increased and pressure is decreased through such quasi equilibrium state that means, it expands slowly by an infinite small amount always in a theoretical sense with a balance between the internal and external pressure. But in a limiting case in practice to conceive it, we consider the imbalance is infinite small. So, that it attains finally this stage, then the work which is finally transferred to the surrounding. In this case, when it expands, the work will come out of the system, which is given by integral of P into dV. Now, this integral we cannot evaluate until and unless we know P as a function of V. That will be found out from some constraining law of the process. But this work done is can be written as integral P d V from state 1 to 2. So, this equals to the work done. That is why this displacement work is told or named as P d V work. But to understand this, I think it will be better if we follow this one which we discussed last class in relation to quasi equilibrium process. Let us consider this, how to understand this, because here if I describe this, this thing works as an information understanding is less, I know this thing. Let us understand how this work becomes P d V work. Let us consider a quasi equilibrium expansion of a gas in a cylinder. This is a piston, restrained piston. Now, let us consider this is a stage when this piston carries some weight w, which are divided into number of infinite small amount of weights. That means, infinitely large number of weights divided like this. Now, this gas has a pressure P and volume V. Let us consider this is the initial stage. Now, this gas within the cylinder and piston represents a closed system okay, bounded by the system boundary. Now, one of the boundary piston is movable. So, that displacement work comes into picture that is the system boundary is displaced. Now, as I explained in the last class, what we can do? Let us think that there are stops like that, that now if we gradually release the weight. So, the gas expands slowly in a gradual manner. Now, first let us uh, go through like this. At the initially at the first moment, the weight and the external pressure if any, they balance the internal pressure forces. That means, this weight plus the force due to any external pressure if there is any external pressure is there P external, they balance the force caused by the internal pressure on the cylinder. This is all right. So, this is in equilibrium position, this is simple mechanics. Now, if we release a small weight, so that a small infinite small imbalance is created, then the piston moves by an amount delta z, which is very small. Now, in this case what we do, if we make the small movement and slow movement of the piston, the dissipative effect is absent, friction is almost absent. In the ideal case, we can consider the piston to be frictionless, but even if there is friction in a slow motion, such a slow motion, the friction is almost absent. So, what happened? This moves by a distance delta z. So, then what is the work done in this case? The work done is that, so now this weight, now you think in this way, this weight w, let us consider the weight w is the net force that includes both the forces, weight, this, this weight and the forces due to external pressure, this balance the P into the area. Now, when this is moved to a distance delta z, this means that this force has a displacement delta z. That means, as if this weight w, total weight w which is being balanced by the pressure force this side of the piston is being lifted against gravity by an amount delta z. So, what is the work done? Work done is P a delta z that means p into dv dv is the volume clear that means it is a sort of non dissipative work that means the change in the potential energy of the weight is this w into delta z that is the w into delta z p into a sorry i am sorry this is the w so work transfer is also w work transfer 
I am sorry the nomenclature is confusing. Let us consider this as small w, otherwise there will be confusing. This is the small w weight. So, small w is p into a. So, work transfer w will be p into a delta z, which will be equal to the small w. So, if we do so in infinite small interval and number of infinite number of paths, so that ultimately it comes to this stage where we attain the stage 2. For example, this is stage 1, this is state 2 from state 1 to state 2, then we can write that w from state 1 to 2 is the integral of p d v from 1 to 2. This is the work done, that is the p d v work. If any one of you have any question, you can ask me now, because I am telling you this is the basic confusion. In many books, it is very difficult to understand from the book that why it is p d v work. That means, always we consider a small distance, slowly if you cause a large displacement of the piston, then forced into displacement, that work is a dissipative work in nature. This is a non-dissipative work, like the work done in a conservative force field. That means, always the work which is being done to lift this weight to a small incremental distance delta j. That means, all these works are dissipative, non-dissipative work. That means, when you consider some weight, this is coming from this position to this position, that the difference in potential energy is actually the work delivered by the piston because no work is being dissipated. So, this is the way one can conceive that if there is a closed system which has a pressure P and volume V, initially for example, P 1 and V 1 and come to a state P 2 and V 2 by expansion through a quas series of quasi equilibrium states, then the non-dissipative work which comes out is equal, equal to integral P d V and this work is known as displacement work or p d v work. And sometimes this is known as reversible work. The word reversible we will discuss while I will be teaching you the second law of thermodynamics, reversible work. Because this process is a reversible process. That means, if you want to go back from this position again to the initial position through again through same quasi equilibrium states, you will get back this work, which you will not be doing so, because if you take a mass of gas in a, because probably you can understand this thing from your common uh, sense, that there is a mass of gas, there is a piston, if you just expand first, not through quasi equilibrium states, a natural expansion of gas. From one state 1 to state 2, if you measure the work done by any work measuring instrument, and if you compress the piston again from state 2 to state 1, and if you measure the work required to uh, return its state 1, this similar that initial state from state 2, you will see that two works are not equal. This is because the dissipative work which has been lost in friction is not same in for both forward and reverse processes because of the hysteresis. This I will explain. That means, the process is not reversible. Though the system comes back to its initial state, but there is a change from the surrounding because surrounding got some work earlier and surrounding has given some different work afterwards to return the system to its initial state. Keep in mind when I will be discussing the reversible process, I will come to the same point. That means, if you consider a non-dissipative work through quasi equilibrium states, this work equals to integral P d V when the displacement of this system boundary of a closed system takes place. Okay, all right. So, now we come to the next one. This is very simple, paddle wheel work paddle wheel work. This is a very simple, the name itself tells what is a paddle wheel work. Now, if we consider some liquid or some fluid, better to consider liquid, some liquid in a container. Now, if you stir it with a stirrer or paddle wheel, this is a stirrer or paddle wheel, stirrer or paddle wheel, rotate it. What is this? By physics very simple, you stir a paddle wheel or a stirrer in a liquid, its temperature is raised. What is done basically? Working work is being transferred to this system. That means, we take this as a system, then we can tell 
that work transfer takes place across the system boundary, work has come from the surrounding to the system, which has caused this property to change. It may be denoted by initial property x1, y1, any two thermodynamic property, the properties are changed to x2, y2. What happens in fact, we know the temperature is increased. Today, we can tell it that because of the work transfer, the internal energy increases. But this type of work transfer is known as paddle wheel or stirring work. But one this very important difference between the PDB work and this work, here friction is very important. Because of the friction, the work is done. Because if you want to rotate a stirrer or paddle wheel within a, in a fluid as a system, if the fluid has no friction, no viscosity, no work is required to rotate it. So, therefore, here friction is the agent for the work to be transferred to the system. So, this is the dissipative work but it is the work transfer. So, if you think from the thermodynamic point of view, if you define this as a system, if I ask what is the energy transfer, you tell sir work transfer because of the rotation of the paddle wheel. You understand? This work transfer causes a change in the state of the system from any two independent thermodynamic properties to other two independent thermodynamic properties to define these different states. In fact, what happens? The temperature is changed and if temperature is changed, some other properties will be changing according to the relationship of the different properties. So, therefore, this is a kind of work transfer which is irreversible work transfer. Irreversible thing means when this is dissipative in nature and here friction is the agent for transferring the work. This is known as paddle wheel work or starrer work, sometimes starring work. These terminologies are important. When you will be solving problems, you will see some paddle wheel work amounts this. So, this is paddle wheel work. Another is the flow work. Flow work probably you have already heard or you have already read in fluid mechanics. What is flow work? Flow work is the work required to maintain a flow. What happens when there is a continuous flow? Now, you see paddle wheel work and the PDB work part into closed system. Now, the flow work pertains to a control volume when there is a steady flow of fluid, a steady flow of mass, a steady flow of matter coming into the system, going out of the system, control volume system or control volume. Now, you know when there is a steady flow occurs or even unsteady flow, any flow occurs at any section to maintain the flow, if you consider a layer at any section, it has to continuously move. That means, if you make a Lagrangian approach, for example, of fluid mechanics with a layer, you see the layer has to always push the neighboring layer to make its way through. Just like going in a queue, that when you are in a queue, you have to always push your neighboring person the persons in front of you to push to make your way through. So, therefore, each and every section does some work in the neighboring fluid. That means, the adjacent section okay, downstream to make its way through. So, by this he does work on its adjacent neighboring downstream layer. This work is known as flow work and because of this work, again the adjacent neighboring layer which receives this work stores some form of energy. That means, we can tell always that at any section, there is some stored energy in the fluid by virtue of which it can do work on its neighboring layer to make its way through. This is the basic concept. So, this work is known as flow work and the energy by virtue of which it can do so is known as pressure energy. So, pressure energy and flow work are the two synonymous things. In case of fluid mechanics, we call it as pressure energy. This is the convention. And in case of thermodynamics, dealing with these things, we tell it as flow work. So, let us again recapitulate this flow work. And you know probably from fluid mechanics, the expression of the flow work in a flowing system, if we denote the pressure at a section P and density at that section of density of the fluid is rho, then flow work or pressure energy is P by rho or P into small v, where small v is the specific volume 1 by rho. Let us recapitulate this again. This is the basic definition. Now, let us recapitulate. Now, we consider a control volume. Let us consider a control volume. Control volume. We know what is a control volume. There is a continuous mass coming in. Let us consider this is the inlet and let us consider this is the outlet, the typical practical control volume. The practical examples are like this. A control volume may be an air compressor. As you know, what is the function of air compression? It receives air at low pressure and temperature continuously, then compresses it. 
because of some thermomachine reaction within it. That I am not going to discuss here because that is beyond the subject of basic thermodynamics. We consider this as a black box. Finally, it delivers the work air at high pressure and temperature. It can be a turbine where high pressure and high temperature gas or air is received and it is being delivered at a lower pressure and temperature. And in doing so, the control volume either develops work in case of turbine or receives work in case of compression. There are other examples also heat exchangers where there is a continuous inflow of materials and continuous outflow of materials. So, they are the examples of control volume systems, turbines, compressors, heat exchangers. So, let us consider such a control volume and to understand the flow work, let us consider that some amount of mass, we just define some amount of mass here just at the adjacent boundary of the control volume. This is d x, this is d x. Let this mass amount is d m, t m. Now, let us consider this amount of mass has to be forced into the control volume by against the pressure. That means, this has to be done. There is a pressure here, for example, here against a pressure existing at this boundary of the control volume, let p. Now, the situation is like that to understand it again that against the pressure p here we have to force this amount of mass into the control volume whose amount is dm now how to do it to conceive it for understanding you can think this way that the for example this is a fluid the fluid in this side left side that means upstream side of this identified mass acts as a piston to force it to force it through the control volume so, if we do that, we can draw the diagram again. That means, we can consider this mass like this here. <coughs> Sorry, this is more bigger, however, does not matter. This mass, this is d x and here we can conceive the fluid acting as a piston. Just for our understanding, hypothetical piston which is pushing, this is nothing but this fluid behind this upstream pushing this through this. So, what is the work done? The force on this piston will be against this pressure P which is prevailing here also the small elemental mass. So, P into let the cross sectional area is A, this is A. So, P into A. Now, the work done is P into A into D. Now, this work when it is done on this layer on this element of fluid not layer we have identified a small uh, amount of mass this is stored in the mass as energy which is pressure energy it crosses the control volume okay now this is usually expressed per unit mass this is the convention work done on this mass per unit mass or the energy stored in this elemental mass per unit mass will be p a d x divided by what is the mass rho into a d x. A d x is the volume, rho is the density. That means, this comes out to be p by rho. In thermodynamics, we do not deal with rho, we usually deal with specific volume 1 by rho. So, therefore, this p v is the flow work. That means, the definition of flow work is the work that is required to push certain amount of fluid across a section in a flow process or in a control volume and this if in a limiting case d x tends to 0, we can define the flow work per unit mass at each and every section because these are the point functions. So, therefore, this is the expression of flow work. So, this is the expression of flow work all right. Next is, uh, next is the shaft work. What is shaft work? Shaft work is again pertaining to a control volume or a steady flow process that also we will appreciate afterwards. Sometimes what happens when there is a control volume, there is a control volume. Can you see when I write is there is an obstruction by my head or something like that? You can see it clearly. Okay, very good. Control volume again you will see that because of continuous inflow of matter as I have told in case of air compressor 
or uh, turbine. Now, what happens? Some work is delivered by the control volume or some work is taken by the control volume in case of work interacting devices like air compression and turbine. And this work is being obtained or is giving, being given through a rotating shaft against a resisting torque and that is known as shaft work. That means, always we make a diagram like that, there is a shaft rotating. That means, when it is a turbine, it develops power or work to the surrounding through the rotation of a shaft against a resisting torque. Similarly, the case for air compressor, that when air compressor or any compressor or a pump, when the work is being given to the control volume, this is giving through the rotation of a shaft against a resisting torque. This work is named or categorized as shaft work. So, these are the different form of mechanical work transfer. So, now at the end of this discussion, I like to mention very emphatically this thing. We now know that work and heat, work and heat are path functions, are very important path functions. What does it mean? Very important. These are the work in energy in transit, they are path functions. Means that if we have a path, that means let us think that a thermodynamic coordinate diagram y x and if a process starts from state 1 and goes to state 2 with property x 1 y 1 and any two independent intensive property x 2 y 2. If there is an work and heat interactions, let us consider work is coming out in this process w and heat is being given q in a different direction I assume. Then thing is that this work for this path is fixed, but it depends upon the path to path. That means, we can write this w as w 1 if we specify the path as some middle quantity a 1 a 2 which is not equal to w 1 minus, though this is very simple today, but still you should bear in mind. Similarly, q 1 a 2 is the heat which is being given to the system in this process, which is not equal to q 1 minus q 2, which means that if we have an another path, for example, we make this system to go to another through another path from state 1 to state 2 through a path 1 b 2. In that case, w 1 b 2 will not be equal to w 1 a 2, because they are path functions. That means, if the work developed is w 1 b 2, then this is not seen. If the heat given in this path is q 1 b 2, so q 1 b 2 is not equal to, see the condition of the pen, q 1 b 2 is not equal to q 1 a 2, means that even if the system connects two terminal state points, the same two terminal state points, but through different paths. So, work and heat interactions through different paths are not same, because they are not path functions. But if I, if anybody asks what is the change in its property in this path 1 a 2, you tell the change in property is x 2 minus x 1, property x property y, y 2 minus y 1. If anybody asks what is the change in property x and y when a system performs a path 1 b 2 from the same state point a to the state, same state point b, then the change will be same, because they are point functions. They are values are associated with the state points. So, whichever may be the path, their changes will remain the same, whereas work and heat are not path functions, are sorry, are not point functions. They depend only on the path. So, the work heat interactions in different paths will be different, okay? all right, and they depend only on the path, they are not ascribed to the state of the system. This is very, very important. While the internal energy or energy stored within the system, that is the point function which is stored at the state points, that I will come afterwards while discussing the first law of thermodynamics. Now, I come to the first law of thermodynamics. Now, let us discuss let us ask what is first law of thermodynamics. Can anyone tell what is first law of thermodynamics? You have read it at school level. What is first law of thermodynamics? Please. Anybody? It is no heat in terms of energy. It is 
conservation of energy. So, first law of thermodynamics is nothing different from the conservation of energy, but it is looked from a different angle. So, first law of thermodynamics, first line of definition, I mean anybody asks this what is first law of thermodynamics, it is conservation of energy. But the first law of thermodynamics is stated in the thermodynamic field of thermodynamics in a different way when we are concerned about the conversion from heat to work or work to heat. This is basically the way the first law of thermodynamics originated. However, first law of thermodynamics in a broad sense is the conservation of energy, but this will be defined the same conservation of energy principle in terms of the processes which converts heat to work or work to heat. So, we will be concentrating the discussion on first law in relating to in relation to conversion of heat to work and work to heat. So, before giving you a formal statement of the conservation of energy in this regard as the first law of thermodynamics, let us see that how it was first discovered or originated by the great scientist Joule. So, let us go through Joule's experiment which is again a recapitulation what you have read at a school level. What Joule did? Let us consider the Joule's experiment. First he took a okay, he took a container where there are there is a there is water for example, liquid water. Let water any liquid any liquid for example, let water and well, let a paddle wheel or a starer is rotated and the entire system is insulated, no heat is being allowed to let this is also closed and insulated. You understand everything I am not writing, let is insulated and let a thermometer is dipped into it. The way Joule did the experiment, he rotated the starer for some time and then stopped. What happened? Tell me what happened? Some amount of work crossed the system boundary. That means, it has come from the surrounding to the system for which the temperature has raised that means, the system state has changed. So, then Joule observed that because of this work transfer into the system, there is a change of state which is manifested by the rise in temperature and he also measured the pressure and he found that pressure remains almost the same. Then what he did? After that, he took this same container, same container, well same container with the water and making it insulated for example, by the sides let it be closed and then one side of it, it made a contact with a hot body, which simply means that he added heat he added heat to the system and what he found? He found that the same temperature rise can be observed by giving a calculated amount of heat and the same change of the state. What concluded him to think at that moment? Probably today you will laugh at it because this was some 150 years back that before that people used to think heat and work these two quantity the two things are entirely different quantity. They may be the energy transfer, but they do not have any link with each other. But it was Joule first who pointed out from this simple experiment that work and heat can produce the same effect on a system and they too cannot be different type of energy transfer, though may be different. Afterwards, the difference will be proved in second law, but they are almost same type of energy transfer by producing the effect in a system. That means, both these things can produce the same effect in a system. Then he went little further, what he did? Then these two concluded that. Now, then he went this, now leave this thing. Now, I discard this thing. Now, come back to this 
diagram that means some work transfer took place and the system temperature increased. Now, we remove this insulation. What it did? When he recognized this one that giving heat temperature can be increased, what he did? He took this bath of water, he took this bath of water, well took this water in a bigger, well in a bigger bath, I am sorry, in a bigger bath containing cold water containing cold water that means this is cold water what happened heat comes out heat comes out from this system to this cold water and he restored the initial state by reading the thermometer that means the initial state of the water from where this tarar was transferred the work to raise its temperature then he found the amount of heat which was coming out because of this, which is the exactly the same which was given to raise its temperature and at the same time this becomes exactly equal to the work. This becomes exactly equal to the work and he took different fluid under different container, different time and he always found this heat and work is same by doing this experiment. Now, if I draw this in a cycle here, how can I show it? in a thermodynamic cycle y x for example, the first one is a process it goes from state 1 to 2 while one minute let me explain then I will listen to your uh, question. So, work is being given work and if it comes back again to the state 1 then he has found out that some heat the work is being given heat is coming out 2 to 1 and he has found out that this W 1 2 is exactly equal to Q 2 1 and this is a cyclic process. What is a cyclic process? That if a system performs number of processes so that it comes back again to the initial state, then the system the number of processes forms a closed loop in thermodynamic diagram which is called a thermodynamic cycle. So, it is a thermodynamic cycle or cyclic process where system starts from 1 goes to 2 and then system comes back again to 2 sorry, but if it is not a reversible process then we can show it by a dotted line. You can ask me a question that sir how do you specify the process yes that I cannot do if that be your question then it is all right then this will be shown by a dotted line. That means, now I tell you that when I specify a natural process in a thermodynamic diagram, it is always advisable you show it by a, because this is a irreversible process not a quasi equilibrium process by a well w 1 2 by a dotted line. I am sorry we cannot specify it by a firm line and this is the process where heat is this is coming out to coming back to the initial state. So, we get the work W 2, we get the heat W 2 1 and W 1 2 is Q 2 1. Simply this was the observation of Joule. Before answering your question, let me complete this part. When he did the experiment, that time the units which were expressing the work, mechanical work and the heat quantity were entirely different. So, therefore, because of this difference in unit, the work quantity evaluated in that unit and heat quantity evaluated in the unit of heat that was previously existing calorie, these two were not equal and there was proportional to each other which is known as mechanical equivalent of it. But that is obsolete by this time because now work and heat are expressed in the same unit because they are the same type of energy transfer which can cause similar effects in a system. And in a cyclic process, if you see, then the work becomes equal to heat. Please, your Oh, then it is answered. I am sorry that it should be drawn only by dotted. Now, I describe this process, this statement in a more formal way. Now, before doing that, I must state you that there are sign convention. Sign conventions, you please write that sign convention, sign convention of work and heat transfer, 
of work and heat transfer. A work and heat flow. Now, let us consider a system with respect to a closed system I am drawing. It is same for open system. When work is coming out, it is considered positive. So, positive direction of the work is considered a convention. You can do it in other way also, but this is the convention. Most of the books, most of the literature follow this. When work is coming out of the system to surrounding, we call it positive. When work is given to the system from a surrounding, it is negative. Just the reverse is the heat. That means, when heat is giving to the system, then heat is positive. While heat is coming out of the system, it is negative. So, common convention which is going on since the birth of thermodynamics is this that the two different directions are considered the positive for these two cases. When work quantity is concerned, work coming out of the system to the surrounding is considered positive, work going into the system from the surrounding is negative. While it is the reverse, when heat is given into the system is positive, coming out is the negative. But you can do other way also, that means positive for both the quantities in the same direction, the work out is positive, heat out is positive, work in is positive, work in is negative, heat in is negative, but this way you will be confused because most of the literature and book follows this terminology. So, therefore, the equations will be little different with a plus minus sign, but ultimately the results are same that we will see afterwards. So, better we should follow this convention, the work coming out is positive, coming out of a system and the reverse is the negative. Similarly, heat given into the system is positive coming out is negative. So, with this as the sign convention and Joule's experiments in mind, now we can tell the thermodynamics first law in a formal form like this. The first law is the algebraic sum of work and heat interactions, net work and heat interactions in a cyclic process by a system with its surroundings in a cyclic process is 0. Today, it appears to be a common sense. Because in a cyclic process, when a system comes back to its initial state, all the energy interactions have to be 0. He gains something, he loses something and ultimately net is 0, so that it can come back to its initial state. This is the formal statement of the first law of thermodynamics. The algebraic sum of net heat and work interactions between a system and its surroundings in a thermodynamic cycle is 0. All right? That means, with this definition, we have written this with this definition. What we can do is with this definition, then we can write that algebraic sum of heat in a cycle is equal to algebraic sum of with this sign convention positive to positive. That means, if there is a net heat added to the cycle, then there will be a net work out of the cycle has to be whose magnitude will be same as the net heat added. That means, net interactions of heat and work will be 0. So, this is basically the first step of the analytical expression of the first law of thermodynamics. All right, This can be written like this in an integral fashion and taking this into this side q minus w. This means in a cycle with a sign like that the direction is equal to 0. That means, difference of heat and work interactions in a cyclic process must be 0. Okay. Q minus W is 0. Okay. Now, this can be interpreted in a different way like this. If I write this for a small infinite small process instead of Q and W, let us write this delta Q minus delta w, the same expression I am writing. What is this? That means, we consider an infinite small process executed by a system, where delta q is the heat added and delta w is the work done by the system. That means, we consider a system, which performs an infinite small process. Try to understand. And a differential amount of heat. Differential means not in term calculus uh, sense of differential, because q and w are the path functions. They cannot be differentiated. That means, a infinite small amount of q delta q is given and infinite small amount of delta w is coming out. And if you integrate this in a thermodynamic cycle, 
then we can write cyclic integral del q minus del w is 0. How, why I am writing this way? Now, you know from mathematics, elementary mathematics that cyclic integral of any point function is 0, true or not? 0, that means I can write cyclic integral of any point function x in this fashion d x is 0, x is any point function which is a property of a system. So, for any property of a system already in my knowledge I can write differential of that property in a cyclic integral is 0 and physical sense also tells like that in a cyclic integral property change has to be 0 because it comes back to its initial state. So, all properties will be regained back to its initial value. So, property changes as 0 for sure for therefore, for all properties and all point functions x this is 0 and if this is so then obviously, one can tell that this becomes is equal to d x. That means, this difference can be expressed by a point function which we may not know so far, but now we know that the difference between the heat and work is a point function not in a cyclic process. That means, in an infinite small process that means, for an infinite small process try to understand delta q minus delta w is d x. That means, we have recognized delta q is the heat given to a system in an infinite small process and we get the work done as delta w, but their difference we do not know what it is, it will be something, but its cyclic integral is 0, but now at least we know that their difference is a point function. That means, if you convert this statement to a finite process, then you can write q minus w is delta of x, x is a property. That means, for any finite process the heat given to the system in executing the process minus the work delivered by the system in executing the process is a is equals to the change of a point function. That means, heat is a path function, work is a path function, but their difference is a change in a point function. Now, you go to the earlier one which we discussed that there are number of paths connecting the two state points work and heats are different, but their differences are same. That means, they are different, but following a constraining equations that the difference between these two q and w though q and w are varying from process to process, but their difference is the same. That means, this is the change of a point function between the two states and this point function is defined as internal energy. Yes internal energy. So, therefore, this is defined as the internal energy. So, therefore, now we can write for an infinite small process delta q minus delta w is d e. Now, e as the internal energy well. So, this can be written this way sometimes delta q taking this here delta w plus d e. Now, for a finite process what will be q minus w is equal to delta E and this will be q is equal to w plus delta. Now, if we denote the state points then it will be much better that means, process uh, connecting 1 to 2 that means, from state 1 to state 2 work obtained for the process from state 1 to state 2 then daily from state 1 to state 2 will be simply E 2 minus E 1. That means, this, this version will be q 1 2 is equal to w 1 2 plus e 2 minus e 1. Now, this is mathematically this is arrived, physically also it is true that in a system executing a finite process, if I give some amount of heat and if I take some amount of work, their balance has to be stored within the system. They are not necessarily make equal, they are not necessarily to be equal, they may be equal, in that case d u will be 0, but if they are not equal, then their balance has to be stored in that. That means, if heat added is more than the work coming out, then this is positive, that means, the difference will be stored as an energy within the system. If it is other way, some stored energy has to be released, so that there will be a decrease in the internal energy. So, therefore, this gives the point function status of energy by thermodynamics, which is defined as internal energy and physically which we mean as energy stored within a system. All right. Now, what is this internal energy? Now, I think that the internal energy E composed of several parts. 
the very first one is that in any system what is the very primary form of internal energy or fine primary component of internal energy which is stored in a system intermolecular energy because of temperature even if a system does not move there is no kinetic energy nothing that there is intermolecular energy so first part is the u which is intermolecular energy well plus there may be other forms of energy stored any form of energy stored within the system will be considered an intermolecular energy a uh, sorry internal energy i'm sorry internal energy i gave you an example that there is a gas only there is a motion within it that means the kinetic energy contained within a system there may be kinetic energy plus there may be potential energy of a system because of its position or placement in a conservative force field that you place a system in a conservative force field the work done on it non dissipative work that is stored within the system as the stored energy that is potential energy or any other kind of energy any other kind of energy so therefore the internal energy comprises of this that means change of internal energy all are point functions du plus d of k plus d of p plus d of any other form of stored energy all these together comprise the internal energy e all right so this is the form that internal energy is defined so therefore we see that internal energy is a point function and we can define now internal energy like that a property of a system whose change in a process executed by the system equals to the difference between the heat and work interaction by the system with its surrounding this is another form of first law the beauty of first law is that though work and heat are path functions but 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 their difference is a point function two are path functions but their difference is a point function and that point function is the internal energy that is the energy stored within the system so internal energy is therefore a property of the system state variable which equals to the difference between work and heat and another important point you must know the birth of internal energy or the definition of internal energy in classical thermodynamics is given through its difference i am not going to define internal energy on its absolute value but it is initially defined in terms of its difference that means heat minus work is the difference in internal energy not equals to the internal energy all right today i think i will end here so any question for today's discussion please ask i think that will be better i mean thermodynamics the concept is much more involved so any question please any query or any question any questions we have just started the first law internal energy how the first law is written any query about the sign convention now you see the sign convention is that cyclic integral dq minus dw is zero some modern books you will see the cyclic integral dq plus dw is zero just all on a sudden you open the book are what professor shom has told cyclic integral dq minus dw is zero or dq plus dw is zero that means the sign convention is that they are in same directions both are positive very simple but if you follow the classical sign convention that work coming out is positive and heat given in is positive then cyclic integral dq minus dw is zero or del q minus del w this del and d are infinite small amount of work and heat interactions not they are differential because they are path functions but their difference is a point function which is the differential of internal energy that is an exact differential because internal energy is a state variable and point function all right any question please yes please sir say in pd work where sir suddenly remove this is a irreversible work that has to be found out from experiment that cannot be given by this expression true but one thing when i define the first law of thermodynamics there is no restriction on friction because it is the conservation of energy there is no restriction on friction now if somebody wants to substitute w by pdv then the question of friction comes into picture there is a constant that it is a frictionless system reversible work you understand so in a reversible work that means you suddenly reduce the load and the piston the cylinder comes fast and work is delivered to the surrounding that is an irreversible work that has to be measured only given by the measured value that cannot be substituted by pdv work now q is equal to w plus d it is for both frictional and frictionless systems so whether there is reversible work or irreversible work 
but when you substitute the work by some term, then you have to be cautious what you are doing. If you substitute it by P d V, then you are doing it for a reversible process that means, non dissipative frictionless system. Otherwise, you are not permitted to do that, that I will come afterwards. All right. Any question? Oh, sure, paddle wheel work and shaft work is different. Paddle wheel work is the work which is done in a closed system by virtue of the friction. If you rotate a star or rotate a paddle wheel, that is the work transfer and shaft work is different. That is the rotation of a shaft against the resistance, against a torque. That is also a non-reversible work, but that is a different kind of work which pertains to a control volume system, continuous flow of matter which gives rise to, which gives uh, some amount of work transfer to the surrounding through the rotation of the shaft. That is the only difference. You cannot make these two things in a same shape and try to find out a microscopic difference between that. These two things are entirely different. One part into a closed system and the work done by rotating a paddle wheel via the agency friction. Another is an open system where the work is developed by the rotation of a shaft against a resisting torque. That is the difference, just the difference as it is by the uh, physics of the thing as you describe it mechanically. Okay. There is no more thermodynamics in between the in, in between these two or the difference between these two. Okay. All right, any other question? No more questions. So okay. All right, thank you. Thank you.